A very warm welcome to Addis News Hour with the news. I'm Shifa Raulako. Do stay with us. The Ethiopian government announces that the Defense Forces, Regional Special Forces and Militia are directed to hold the destruction of the TPLF and the machinations of foreign hands once and for all. In a statement it issued today, the office of the Prime Minister calls on all capable Ethiopians who are of age to join the Defense Forces, Special Forces and Militia to show their patriotism. Haptamu Ashagri presents the full statement as follows. In a statement issued today, Office of the Prime Minister discloses that the Federal Defense Forces, Regional Special Forces and Militia are directed to halt the destruction of the prisoners and the tourist PLF once and for all. The statement said, at this crucial period, in time when our country has embarked on discarding the tattered shawls of poverty, our historical enemies are feverishly organizing to deter us from our past. The TPLF tourist enterprises that has been piping a turn of if done rule Ethiopia, the let it be destroyed, has become a willing accomplice of our enemies and drumming a destruction and instability. The November 3, 2020, unprecedented attack of the Northern Command of the National Defense Forces pushed everything out of control. Our heroic defense forces, along with the Amhara and Afar militia and special forces, defeated the TPLF and broke his back, forcing the members of the group to hide in the trenches of Tambin. Many of its leaders were killed, some were captured, some of them hid in caves and among the peaceful people of Tigray. The government has worked hard over the past eight months to liberate the Tigray region from this scourge of the TPLF. In this process, the people of Tigray have not been able to live a stable life due to the crisis caused by remnant of the TPLF embedded within the communities and actively organizing easy recruiters. The international community has turned a deaf ear, influenced instead by forces that seek to aggravate the problem. It has refused to recognize the complex nature of the process and the destructive nature of the tourist group, abandoning truths and echoing the voices of the perpetrators. Some members of the international community, which have been silent on the group's brutal history of human rights abuses and destruction of the lives of millions while it was in power, have chosen to ignore the government's positive efforts, rather seeking to rescue seated and use the tourist group for their own agenda. With the conviction that continuing the campaign unbated for to rainy season would create an insurmountable crisis for the people of Tigray, the government decided to call a unilateral ceasefire and withdrew its troops. The government enacted the unilateral ceasefire mainly for the sake of civilians and farmers. Nevertheless, it has become apparent that Tigrayan farmers will not be able to farm safely unless the people of Tigray are forever separated from the tourist group. Let alone the Tigray farmers returning to farming activities, the tourist PLF has also started harassing communities in neighboring regions so they would not resume farming activities. It is to be recalled that the international community had been continuously accusing the Ethiopian National Defense Forces of sabotaging supply of humanitarian aid and of human rights violations. But now that our defense forces have moved out in observation of the unilateral ceasefire, our two desire to learn the truth as well as international organizations have observed the children are serving as soldiers, relief is used as a weapon of war, Mothers and young women are rapid, religious institutions are used for military exercise and weapons storage, and air trucks are prevented from entering the Tigray region by the terrorist group. In Afar, the TPLF have killed more than 200 people sheltered in a health institution, while displacing more than 300,000 people in both Afar and Amhara regions. The battle is not with Tigray, but with the terrorist forces that have found hiding in Tigray. Our struggle is against the forces near and far, which are behind the tourist pair left to dismantle our country and destroy Ethiopia's existence. Therefore, all patriots should stand with all their hearts to protect their sovereignty today, as in the past, with determination to defend the dignity and glory of their country. Indeed, Ethiopia will forever stand honored through the efforts of her children, while our names will remain written as heroes in the record of history.
The Ethiopian Peace Corps vows to mobilize Ethiopians in the diaspora to support the displaced in Ethiopia. Briefing journalists today after concluding their mission to their motherland, members of the Corps said their three-week visit to the most vulnerable parts of the country has enabled them to understand how people are affected by instabilities. Kasam Chane reports. The Ethiopian Diaspora Peace Corps, comprising of certain civic organizations, Ethiopian scholars and renowned personalities, living abroad have been touring Ethiopia to have a grasp of the living conditions of the displaced in the country. The delegation has also met with government officials and various institutions to evaluate efforts in reinstating people affected by instabilities in the country. In a press briefing it gave after finalizing it stood the delegation delegation vows to mobilize the diaspora so as to help support the displaced people in Ethiopia. We want to create an atmosphere or a situation of confidence building in our country. We want to establish, we want to contribute to peace. We want to contribute to a, a new Ethiopia, an Ethiopia that is, that looks at everyone in equal terms irrespective of language, race, sex, tribes. This is our, our religion. That's our first objective. S second, we, our second objective is we, will, we focus on contributing by any means possible to the unity and territorial integrity of our motherland Ethiopia. We are cognizant of the fact that there is, a, there is a certain lack of peace in our country, in some areas, not in the whole country, but in some areas of our country, fire is burning here and there. So we want to contribute to, to turn off the, this fire and to contribute to peace and to work hand in hand with any group in Ethiopia and abroad who will work towards the achievement of peace in our country. In Earth's brief observation, the delegation understood that Ethiopia is under an existential threat that should be defended through strong unity, said the delegation. As a responsible body, the Peace Corps pleased to work towards eroding mistrust among the Ethiopians and Ethiopian regions in the diaspora to save their motherland at this critical time. Right to the people of Ethiopia which have been displaced and to Take a look at the degree and magnitude of the destruction and the misplacement and displacement of our people in all those conflict areas, which I'll be naming in a, a few minutes. That's our third objective. Not only just to look and evaluate the degree of destruction of life, property, but also to contribute in the resettlement program in giving a second chance to all those Ethiopians who have lost their lives and property in all those displaced areas. That's our third objective. Our fourth objective is we are aware that our country Ethiopia that we love is in a critical situation today, challenged by internal and external enemies. We are committed to fight both internal and external enemies of Ethiopia, wherever they might be. There is no compromise in that. It is only when we have our country, Ethiopia, that we can live in peace and contribute. We might be in America, but we are here in, in Ethiopia every day, spiritually. So we, there is no compromise for us when it comes to, the, to any group that wants to harm Ethiopia, domestic group or external group, our objective is to work together with all Ethiopians, wherever they are, they are and contribute to the well-being of our country. Apart from paying a visit to the displaced in different parts of the country, the delegation has also been providing material support, it was indicated.
Now, although Ethiopia it has been doing everything it could to persuade the international community of its effort to help its own citizens in Tigray, some of the Western world has continued to be both unappreciative and tone deaf. Several renowned authors and writers argue that the U.S. is deliberately ignoring the TPLF's invasion into the Amhara and Afar regions, while it wrongly accuses the Amhara of occupying Western Tigray. The U.S. intervenes in the internal affairs of the Third World only for the maintenance of its interests, while it creates complications and instability in the process. In the following reportage, Sintayo Tamras looks at the salient aspects of U.S. intervention. Take a look. A number of authors are reflecting on the pressure by certain Western governments on Ethiopia since the onset of the conflict in Tigray in November last year. As to Johannes Gadamu, despite peaceful overtures from Ethiopia, inflammatory statements released by officials from the U.S. State Department and European allies have been unjustifiably putting undue pressure on the government of Ethiopia. Such one-sided rhetoric only emboldens terrorists, inflames ethnic conflicts and weakens the position of the Ethiopian government and the nation. Seeing the recent fresh cold-blooded attacks by TPLF on civilians in Afar and Amhara regions, many authors question the silence of certain global powers. The authors show skepticism about the policy of these powers, particularly that of the United States toward East Africa in general and Ethiopia in particular. Adiso Admas, author, said with his article on Borkona Online magazine, as long as the TPLF was willing to do the West's bidding, not only was the West willing to ignore the suffering of Ethiopians, but also willing to defend it in international forums. U.S. foreign policy is short-sighted when it comes to third world countries, Adiso says. U.S. concern for the third world stems from strategic economic and environmental consideration and not from genuine care for its peoples and their well-being. America has particularly interfered in the internal affairs of virtually every third world country and nearly allies with deleterious outcomes. From Latin America to Southeast Asia to much of Africa, American foreign policy has allies succeeded in exacerbating existing conflict is or generating new ones by installing dictatorships and stunting emancipatory movements. Hence, since the TPLF terrorist group is the best ally of the US and some other Western powers, they will aid its evil actors whether it poses historic humanitarian crisis in Ethiopia or a major regional threat or it dismantles Ethiopia. According to President of the International Strategic Association, Grigory Kaplay, Samantha Power was there in Ethiopia ostensibly on humanitarian grounds to force the Ethiopian government to allow the rebel terrorist and insurgent group, the TPLF, to declare an independent state and let it spell the end of Ethiopia. Her failure and direct threat is from the U.S. Embassy in Addis Ababa and from U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, all in support of a pro-Egypt U.S. policy, have so alienated the Ethiopian government that it is likely that the U.S. Joe Biden administration has lost its influence in the Horn of Africa to an ever greater degree than in the Cold War. Today, however, the U.S. moves to support Egypt's war against Ethiopia as part of the centuries-old Egyptian moves to control the source of the Blue Nile, which provides Egypt's water, Kaplay mentioned. Indeed, this is exactly the playbook which U.S. Secretary of State Blinken is using, almost identical to the U.S. William Clinton administration playbook in the 1990s for the breakup of Yugoslavia. This time, the playbook was being drafted to aid Egyptian demands to weaken and divide Ethiopia, which controls the headwaters of the Blue Nile, says Kaplay. Now, TPLF's attacks on refugees, IDPs, and civilians are uh, war crimes. That's according to the Deputy Director of Atlantic Council Africa Center, Branwyn Bruton. In her Twitter post, she says the government of Ethiopia's ceasefire cannot continue while children are being slaughtered and religious sites like Lalibala attacked. This is the time for international officials to speak forcefully to restrain TPLF, she has said.
Ethiopian ambassador to Saudi Arabia, uh, Len Jobati has conferred with uh, the Saudi Foreign Affairs Minister Ahmed Katan on issues regarding Ethiopian migrants in the country. On the occasion, Ambassador Len Jo called on the Saudi government to stop detaining Ethiopian migrant workers in lockups and implement the proclamation that grants full pardon and amnesty to undocumented uh, migrants. The Saudi Foreign Minister Ahmed Katan, to his part, vowed to take the issue to the Ministry of Interior so as to seek possible solution to stop detention of Ethiopian migrants in his country. And now in business, the Trade and Industry Minister, uh, Ministry rather, states that the Ethiopian government has finalized preparations to showcase the country's culture, investment and trade at the much-awaited Expo 2020 Dubai starting from August 11, 2021. Ethiopia will be participating in the Expo under the theme Land of Origins and Opportunities, the Ministry indicated. State Minister of Export Expansion Division of the Trade and Industry Ministry, Ambassador Misgano Araga said, Ethiopia will name days that will promote its music, cultural values, coffee, trade, investment, and public holidays at the Expo. The Ethiopian government has established a national steering committee that facilitates Ethiopia's participation at Dubai Expo 2020 under the theme Ethiopia Land of Origins and Opportunities. The fortress was built in the 15th century by the Mamluk Sultan Kate Bay on the site of the Faros Lighthouse. The Abu al Abbas al Mursi Mosque is the most important in the city. Built in 1775 over the tomb of an Andalusian saint, its walls and domes are covered in beautiful carvings. And finally, China and Russia have begun a series of joint military drills in the northeastern China that the two countries have described as a counter-terrorism exercise. The five-day drills are taking place just weeks before the U.S. is due to complete its military pullout from Afghanistan, which borders China. Beijing and Moscow have drawn closer uh, their ties with the United States of America uh, have deteriorated. Goshu Melissa has more on that from Al Jazeera. Nearly half a century ago, these two neighbors fought a brief border war, but the latest China-Russia military drill showed that hostility is now in the past. In this mock battle, the enemy is unnamed. It is a military partnership that is strengthening thanks in part to both countries' worsening relations with the United States. If you say it's a marriage of convenience, that underestimates the, the depth of their shared interests. And of course, the biggest one is uh, opposing America and undermining America and the West. And that's extremely important in, in explaining the strength of the uh, current China-Russia relationship. 
10,000 soldiers are taking part in the exercise which will last for five days, the 30th such war games since 2003. Russia's President Vladimir Putin and China's leader Xi Jinping recently boasted that their country's relationship was now unbreakable. And Moscow and Beijing appear to be in agreement on Afghanistan. Both were highly critical of the decision to withdraw all U.S. troops by September with concerns that Afghanistan, which borders China, could again become a haven for armored groups like Al-Qaeda. When China's Foreign Minister Wang Yi met Taliban officials last month, he urged the delegation to distance themselves from what he called terrorist groups. Analysts say it signaled the concerns that China and other countries will be left to deal with the fallout of the rapid U.S. withdrawal. Why did Biden push this so suddenly and so severely? And uh, within Chinese circles, also Russian and some other places, they believe that this was, uh, you know, basically saying, OK, we broke it, but it's not in our backyard. It's in yours, Russia, China, Tajikistan, all the rest of the stands. More war games also involving Russia, but this time with a force from Uzbekistan. A joint special forces drill close to the Afghan border, preparing for whatever scenario that may unfold from the Taliban's rising gains in the battlefield. And finally, let me remind you of the top stories before we go. The Ethiopian government calls on federal and regional forces to help halt the destruction of the TPLF. And diaspora delegation vows to mobilize support for the displaced in Ethiopia. And that's all the news there is for now. Many thanks indeed for watching us. Bye-bye.